Welcome to my Secret Place Devotion with Oyix Alfred. The Word of God is alive and equipped to change your life. Good morning. New week, new grace, new power, new strength. Rest upon you in the name of Jesus. The Bible says in Proverbs 24 verse 16 that the godly may trip seven times, but they will get up again. But one disaster is enough to overthrow the wicked. Father, thank you so much, Lord, for as many as are godly and that will fall or be afflicted or trip this week, my Father. I ask that you stretch forth your hands and lift them up in the name of Jesus, that no disaster will come near their dwelling that will keep them down, Lord. In the name of Jesus, thank you, our strengthener. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, God doesn't relate with all of his children the same way. And that is because we also, that are God's children, we don't relate with God in the same way. Some of us will serve God at our convenience. You know, they do the things of God when it is convenient for them. But when it is not convenient, they disobey God. Some people serve God when it is convenient and some people you know serve God even when it is not convenient that same way that is how God relates with us you see a person who will lie when it is convenient for him and then when it's not convenient he you know he tells the truth so you shift left or right not depending on the word of God but depending on how you feel at that particular moment and the same way you are relating with God you are not faithful to the word of God you don't care what God thinks you don't care about the service committed into your hands your careless about the things of God. That is exactly the same way God also relates with us. The Bible tells us in Psalm 18 verse 25, it says, to the faithful, you show yourself faithful. To the blameless, you show yourself blameless. To the pure, you show yourself pure. But to the devious, you show yourself shrewd. So, if you are not committed to God at all, and there's another person who is really committed to God, laying down his life for the kingdom, obeying God no matter what, you can't expect the same quality of treatment. There is a general treatment that God gives all of his creation, whether you are good or bad. There are certain things that God, because he created you, he's going to do for you. And it is general for every human being. Even if you're an armed robber, whatever you are, God loves you. And so there's a level of protection and preservation and blessing he gives you because he he created you that he takes it a notch higher when you now become his child there are certain commitments that god has towards you the child that he doesn't have towards all his creation now you take it a notch higher there are certain things that god will do because you have come into the place of service of the kingdom you're not just a child of god consuming 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 you now begin to use your talents your gifts your abilities to now be a blessing to others to advance the cause of the kingdom that's how you take the notch higher now there is another that level which is when you are not just a servant of God but you now become a covenant man at that point God takes it a notch higher he takes his commitment to you a notch higher because you can actually be a servant of God and not be living as a covenant man however the most powerful man on earth is a covenant man there are some things that God will do for a man who functions as a covenant man that the other Christians will not see. For instance, if you read the Bible, you will notice men who God really shows up very strong on their behalf. You know, these are covenant men because they live the life of a covenant. And I see that a lot of people quote scriptures that are reserved for covenant men. They keep quoting it, but they will never see it because they are not obeying the tenets of the covenant. Okay, so a good and important question at this point, I'm sure you're thinking, okay, so what exactly is a covenant man? Who is a covenant man? Very simple. A covenant man is a person who is in covenant with God. The truth is that we all are in covenant with God. If you become a child of God, we are all children of God. However, there are people who ignore the terms of the covenant. Those people are not functioning as covenant men, but there are people who obey the terms of the covenant. Those ones are functioning as covenant men. If we take a look at um, Israel, you will notice that because they were a nation in covenant with God, God cut a covenant with Abraham and all his descendants. So because they were in covenant 
covenant with God. What God did was he would protect them during warfare. And so Israel will get into combat with another nation that is bigger, mightier, stronger, more armed than them. And Israel will still win that battle. And many times, not one single soldier in the Israeli camp will die. Not one would have anything happen to him. And remember the combat of those days. It's not like they'll be in their houses and they'll press a button and a missile goes to destroy the other nation. No, they were in arm to arm combat. They will use spears and arrows and things like that. And nothing will happen to Israel. But you see the other soldiers, all of them will die. Why? God was the covenant friend of Israel. He was fighting for them. So whenever you attack an Israelite, you are directly attacking God and God will preserve and protect Israel and attack you. But you will see there are other times when Israel will go to battle and they will lose a lot of people will die in that battle let's see joshua 7 verse 2 until about 4 he said joshua sent some of his men from jericho to spy out the town of Ai, east of bethel when they returned they told joshua there's no need for all of us to go up there it won't take more than two or three thousand men to attack Ai, since there are so few of them don't make all our people go there to struggle so approximately three thousand warriors were sent but they were soundly defeated the men of Ai chased the Israelites from the town gate as far as the quarry and they killed 36,000 who were retreating down the slope. The Israelites were paralyzed with fear at the turn of events and their courage melted away. How come? These are people, you know, who would ordinarily defeat the hidden nations. But the Bible says at this time, the children of, I remember there were not even a lot of people. The, the, the spies went there to spy. There were very few soldiers. They didn't have the physical capacity to defeat Israel. Meanwhile, Israel was defeating nations bigger than them. But now this was a nation that was smaller than Israel, even by physical strength. But the Bible says something that Israel was so defeated that Israel were paralyzed with fear at the turn of events. How come? The answer is simple at that point israel broke the covenant of god and so they didn't have the covenant blessing of god preserving and protecting them if you read the whole of that chapter the bible said that joshua cried out to god as a matter of fact he lay before god from morning till evening asking god what exactly is the problem and then verse 10 the bible said but the lord said to joshua get up why are you lying on your face like this? Israel has sinned and broken my covenant. They have stolen some of the things that I commanded must be set apart. And so that was the problem. They had broken the covenant of God. And so that blessing of the covenant was withdrawn from Israel. And so they suffered defeat. The same way too, from people who do not obey the covenant of God. The covenant of God are the things that are written in the scripture. If you don't obey, you cannot expect the blessings of the covenant to rest upon you. You have to obey the terms of the contract because you know on God's side, God will always obey the terms of the covenant. It is usually our own side that don't obey the terms of the covenant. So you can be a child of God and not be a covenant person. Not because there's no covenant between you and the Lord, but because you are breaking your own terms of the covenant. You can be a servant of God and not be a covenant man. Why? You are breaking in terms of the covenant. So there is a type of relationship with God called a covenant relationship with God. That is a man who, number one, is in covenant with God, but also obeys the tenets of the covenant. This is a powerful man. You cannot defeat a man of covenant. There's nothing you can do against him. The Bible says to us in Psalm 103, uh, verse 17, said, but from everlasting to everlasting, the Lord's love is with those who fear him and his righteousness with their children's children. He said, with those who keep his covenant and remember to obey his precepts. So you see, the Bible is saying that it is to those who keep the covenant, not just those who are in covenant with God. They keep the covenant. They go to the scripture. They find what God has said and they obey it. As you obey the word of God, you are obeying the terms of the covenant. The Bible tells us again in Deuteronomy 29, 9, he says, carefully follow the terms of this covenant so that you may prosper in everything you do. A covenant man cannot go down. The economy of the nation will not affect his own economy. Why? He is obeying the terms of the covenant. Romans chapter 1 verse 13 talks to us about men who are 
covenant breakers. They will break the covenant of God. And when you do that, you will only get the blessing of a child of God. You might get the blessing of a servant of God, but the ultimate blessing of a covenant man, you will not see it because there are different types of relationship with God. And one of them is a covenant based relationship. Stop disobeying God and see how your life will turn around. You will be a mystery to people. Nobody can understand you. The more they are plotting against you, those things they are using to plot against you will be the same thing that will lift them up. You see it in life of Daniel, Joshua, those who serve the Lord. You see the usual hand of God upon their life. Why? They don't just know about the covenant. They are not just in covenant with God. These are men who obey and Keep the terms of the covenant. So my question to you this morning is, are you a child of God or are you a covenant child of God? Think about it and make adjustments where necessary. God bless you. For other life-changing messages, you can now download the app Rev Oyik Speaks from Play Store for Android phone users or Apple Store for iOS users. You can also follow us on Instagram, YouTube, and Telegram, all on the handle Oyeks Alfred. Oh, yeah.